Hello, this is Honors Biology Intro to Bio Lecture Video Number 4. This lecture will talk about the properties of water and uh, pH. So let's begin. Water. Water has many, many properties, and they enable water to behave in a certain way. One of the major properties of water is that it's polar or has polarity. Well, what does polar mean? The definition says an uneven distribution of charge. Really, what that means is pretty much a side of water exhibits a negative charge, and some sides of the water exhibit a positive charge. Well, based on this picture, the hydrogens have to do with the positive, and the oxygen side of it has to do with the negative. Okay, and What that means is, polarity means oxygen and hydrogen are connected to each other because they're sharing electrons, and they're connected over here because they're sharing electrons. Well, oxygen has a greater pull of the electrons. Because it pulls more electrons towards it and electrons are negatively charged, oxygen will exhibit a negative charge. And it's doing the same thing with this hydrogen. They're sharing electrons, but oxygen has a better pull of those electrons. The pull of electrons are it's called electronegativity. Oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. So it will pull more electrons towards it. So it becomes more negative on this side okay, of the water molecule. Well, if hydrogen's lost electrons, if they've minused a minus one charge, they have now become more positive. So double negative, they've, they've lost, they've minused a minus one. That, that means they've become more positive, okay? Solubility has to do with water's ability to dissolve things. So this is showing you salt being put into water. You stir it up a little bit or just let it sit. It will dissolve. You won't see the crystals anymore. They will have broken apart in what's called ions or charged particles in this case. Sodium ions and chloride ions or chlorine ions are formed. Sodium ions have a positive charge. Chloride ions have a negative charge. These positives in sodium are sticking to the negative part of the water molecule. These negative chloride ions are sticking to the positive part of the water molecule. And that is how water will dissolve things. So water will dissolve things that are also charged in some way. So charged particles are ions or they have a polarity. So water will dissolve things that are polar and things that are ionic, basically. Okay, Cannot dissolve things that are not polar, like oil. It's not polar. Oil will sit on top of it. They will separate. This is like sal this is like what your salad dressing looks like. Your salad dressing would have vinegar on the bottom, which is polar, and it would have oil on the top, which is nonpolar. They don't mix with each other. They don't dissolve each other. Okay, like things dissolve like things. So water is polar. It can dissolve other polar things or other charged particles that are ions. Okay, oil is nonpolar, it could only dissolve things that are nonpolar. Okay. Hydrogen bonding. Well, this is a special bond that water can make. And there's a few other things that can make it, but mainly water for what you need to know. It's a weak bond. It's not very strong. You break hydrogen bonds when you jump into your swimming pool, when you take a shower, you when you're in, when you touch water, you are breaking hydrogen bonds, basically. What are they? Well, they are the bonds that hold waters to each other. So this little symbol here has to do with the charge or the polarity. So this means this side exhibits a negative charge. The hydrogen exhibits a positive charge. Well, this negative charge side of the, of the molecule and oxygen sticks to this positive side, this hydrogen positive side in this water molecule. That forms what's called a hydrogen bond. Okay, and there's a hydrogen bond right here. So the positive of this hydrogen is sticking to the negative end of this oxygen. Over here, the positive end of the hydrogen is sticking to the negative end of the hydrogen. Over here, the positive side of this hydrogen is sticking to the negative side of this oxygen. Because water does this hydrogen bonding, water has a tendency to stick to itself. Sticking to itself, cohesion. Okay, cohesion. All right. When water sticks to other things, that's called adhesion, all right? And water, because it's polar, will stick to other things that also are polar or charged or ionic, okay? So what do we put on our cars to prevent water from beating up and sticking on our cars? Well, what we do, to we put wax on our cars, and wax is nonpolar, so water will not hydrogen bond or stick. It will not, it's not adhesive 
towards wax. So the water will roll right off your car if you put wax on it. Okay, so cohesion, water sticking to itself, adhesion, water sticking to something else. Okay, and surface tension, well, what happens on the layer of water, on the surface of water, this is when people belly flop and they smack hard and they slap against the water. Well, you are breaking a bunch of hydrogen bonds that are all linked together at the same time. So in, when you belly flop, it hurts because of how many hydrogen bonds you have to break all at one time. Ideally, you want to break into the water as a small person, you know, with your hands pointing first, if you're diving into the water, and then you can penetrate the hydrogen bonds, and then they start breaking easier at that point. So once you break some, it's easier to break more hydrogen bonds. That's why when you belly flop, you're trying to break too many at one time, too much surface tension at one time, and it hurts very badly. Temperature moderation. Well, San Diego, we, um, where we live in San Diego, we have been gifted by water's ability to moderate temperature. So San Diego, if you live near the coastline in San Diego, we're not quite, our school isn't quite on the coastline, but if you live on the coastal coast area, you will notice that in the summertime when it gets really hot out in the East County, the beach doesn't really get quite as warm. And that's because the temperature is moderated by that large, large body of water that has a very high heat capacity. Well, what does that mean? Well, water can absorb and release large amounts of heat, okay? And it can do that without changing temperature a whole lot. So this is showing you, you take a balloon, and I'm not kidding, you put water in a balloon. I would have liked to have done this for you in class. Put water in a balloon. You can put that balloon over a candle for a while, and it will not pop, actually. Okay. Now the water will eventually start to warm up and warm up. And then the, I can see an issue where this will burst, but be careful. I'm not suggesting that you do this at home, but I'm telling you, you can put water in a balloon and you would think this flame would, would pop that balloon instantly, but it doesn't happen. And that's because the water inside of there is absorbing a great deal of that heat and it, it's not changing temperature a whole lot. So it's not getting warm enough to pop the balloon. Eventually it will, but not quite yet. So being in San Diego, we have this large body of water. Our ocean get, in the summertime is about 70 degrees. And what is San Diego's temperature relatively around all year? Around 70. In the wintertime, our ocean doesn't usually get much colder than 55. So if you live by the ocean, it never really gets much colder than 55 in the winter. And it, never, and it doesn't get a lot warmer than the 70s and 80s at the coastline. In the summertime so the temperature is moderated here in san diego specifically because we're so close to a body of water and that body of water maintains a relative moderate temperature year round water also it, it's it's one of the fewest um compounds or elements on the planet well that it's one of the few that when you go from a liquid to a solid state most things in nature become denser, all right? And therefore, they will sink, all right? So most objects, the solid version of them will sink in the liquid version of them, okay? And that's because the solid version is usually denser. But ice is different. Ice, because of the crystal structure, because of that hydrogen bonding specifically, it keeps the particles a certain distance apart from each other. So even though when water freezes and becomes ice, ice, actually the particles are farther apart than they, the water molecules are farther apart in ice than they are in liquid form. So therefore, this is less dense, okay, than liquid water. So ice will float, okay? So most solids are denser, but water as a solid is not denser than the liquid version. So ice will float, all right? Also water, because it can dissolve, because, it's a, because it dissolves so many different things. And I told you, it dissolves polar things and ionic things, things with charges. Well, water is what's called the universal solvent because most things in nature are polar or ionic by nature. Most things, not all, but most things in nature. So there's more things in nature that are ionic or polar than non-polar. So more, more things in nature will dissolve in water than won't. Water being a dissolving agent is the solvent and it's shown you here in the picture. And the things that you are dissolving in the water, and they usually spread themselves out pretty evenly 
okay? Those things are called the solute. So the thing you're dissolving, solute, the thing that's being dissolved in is the solvent. Water can be broken down into two parts, okay? So water can be broken down into two things. One of those things is called hydronium, and the other thing is called hydroxide. Hydronium is pretty much a hydrogen connected to water. So this is like a hydrogen ion, okay? Hydroxide is an OH ion. So this is hydrogen, this is oxygen and hydrogen, okay? You take the two and you combine them together, hydrogen added to hydrogen and oxygen, and together they make water basically. So you take water and you can break it apart into two pieces. One of those pieces, hydronium, forms what's called your acids. The other part of the water called the hydroxide, which is a hydrogen and one oxygen, so one oxygen, one hydrogen, this forms the base part of the scale. So the base or the alkaline part of the scale is one hydrogen, one oxygen, called a hydroxide with a negative charge. A hydronium ion is a hydrogen ion for the most part, in this case, attached to a water, and it is a positive charge. So it's a hydrogen attached to a water. So you take a hydrogen, you mix it with a hydroxide, and you make water. So water gets split into what forms the pH scale, and it's from 0 to 14. And here are common things on the pH scale. Okay, The ocean is a pH of 8. Right around 8 is the ocean. So the ocean is a little bit of a base. Every time you jump one number, it is getting 10 times more powerful. So it's a logarithmic base scale. It's a 10 to the it's a by it's a power of 10 for each jump. So from a 7 to an 8, 10 times more of a base. From a 7 to a 9, 10 times 10. It's a hundred times more powerful. From a 7 to a 10, it's 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand times stronger. Same thing going the other direction. You go from neutral water, pure water, and you go down to a six, it's 10 times stronger, 10 times more acidic. From a seven to a five, so from water to a banana, 10 times 10, 100 times more acidic. From water to a tomato, you have 10 times 10 times 10, a thousand times more acidic. Grapes, 10,000 more times acidic, 100,000 times more acidic. A million times more acidic. So your stomach, acids, they're pretty nasty. This is why if you've ever vomited and it has come up, it doesn't feel good. It burns because it's very, very acidic. So acids have more of these H pluses or H3O. This is the same thing. Hydronium ion is referred to as H3O plus, and that means you've attached a water to that H. Okay, so it's an H plus for the most part. Okay, so hydronium ions are related to acids, all right? They have more of them, and the farther away you go away from seven, the more of them you have, okay? Bases have more hydroxide, OH minuses, in them. So if you see a solution, and the solution has OH minuses in it, I'm not worried about this. This is sodium. I'm not worried about the sodium. The fact that it has OH minuses in it, this is a base, okay? This solution here has Cl minuses in it. That's not what we're worried about. We're worried about OH minuses or H3O pluses or H pluses. That's what we're worried about. And if you notice, this one has H pluses in it. So this solution here would be your acid. This solution here would be your base. Okay. Now, your neutral is a 7, and 7 has equal hydronium, equal acid as it has base. So water is neutral as a result of that. And we're going to stop there today.